Welcome back everyone, live CUBE coverage here in San Francisco for Google Next 23 CUBE team coverage. I'm John Furrier, your host, Rob Stretch, a CUBE analyst leading the team there. We got team coverage, Lisa Martin here, Dustin Kirkland, CUBE analyst. We've got two great guests. We're going to talk about infrastructure and the TPUs and GPUs, all the things powering the solutions that make all the AI work, which is critical. Everyone knows what's going on with the horsepower need on the GPUs and the TPUs, which is Google's signature. Mark Lohmeyer, Vice President, General Manager of Compute and Machine Learning Infrastructure at Google Cloud, and Sachin Gupta, VP and General Manager of Infrastructure and Solutions Group. We call them the dynamic duo, they're here. <laughs> um, really taking care of the, the physics and, the, and making sure that it's running fast. Guys, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Robin, I really appreciate Thank you coming you. on. Yeah, we've been circling this interview all week because we just loved the demos yesterday on Duet AI showing really, like really next gen uh, AIs. First party apps crossing over using data on both sides, deducing it, making reasoning decisions, action. Kind of really powerful, kind of shows the direction of where this is going. Uh, everyone is completely loving the AI, generative AI market right now. And so with that becomes the need for speed, right? So <laughs> you guys are doing that. So give us an update on what you guys are doing for your groups. You've got two different businesses you're running, Mark. So actually, explain how you guys are organized real quick. Yeah, sure. So I think you know we're uh, we're seeing incredible customer excitement around what they can do with generative AI, and uh, you know because we're responsible for infrastructure, we sort of look at hey, how do we design and architect these end-to-end -end infrastructure stacks across hardware and software mm -hmm. to meet the demands of this next generation of workloads? And it is clearly an inflection point to computing, right? If you look at the uh, the size of large language models, they've been growing on average 10x per year over the last five years. So that's 10 to the fifth, right, over just five years. That's placing incredible demand on the, on the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, at Google, uh, we're really uh, excited to be able to help customers meet those needs with uh, a comprehensive and advanced stack that includes, you know, all these great hardware capabilities, GPUs, yeah. TPUs, storage, how we bring them together from a networking perspective, but also the software on top of that, yeah. right? Support for frameworks, the compilers, all the things that make it easy for AI researchers. And, you're, and your to do business jobs. is specifically what that's in, in your business? Yeah, yeah, so I'm responsible for a compute and machine learning infrastructure, so this is general purpose compute, yeah, and then okay. the core cloud uh, GPUs and TPUs. Discussion, what's your particular? I look at storage, networking, and distributed cloud. Got it, okay, great. Let's get out this, make sure we can get the, <laughs> the lanes in there. Yep, Stay in your yep. lane. Um, no. So let's get into the, 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 the drivers right now. What are you guys seeing with this, with this event and this market, the key drivers in your business? Obviously the GPUs, everyone's talking about it. TPUs here behind us is a, quite the impressive setup. They got guards watching those things. There's some billions of dollars worth of gear there. What's going on, what are the drivers? So uh, it, it comes back to these workloads, right? If you, if you sort of look at uh, our customers, um, they're looking to train, to tune, and to serve a broad range of models. And against that, they want to have the right infrastructure options for each of those types of models. And so, you know, the fact that we support uh, both GPUs and TPUs, in fact, we have 13 different instance types across those gives customers a lot of choice and flexibility to deliver awesome performance, but also at the, at the right price point. On the networking side, this has been a big thing, the cross-cloud, just read the queue, just read the cloud and the cross-cloud. It's not cross-cloud services, it's networking, right? I mean, that's the yeah. key differentiation. Yeah I, yeah, I can explain that. So, um, it's about helping customers get access to the latest and greatest in AI and data services that reside on Google Cloud. So if you want to use Vertex, for example, if you want to use BigQuery or Spanner, but your data is sitting on-prem or sitting in another cloud provider, connecting that and securely bringing it into Google Cloud so that you can get the best of our services is what customers are looking for. As the cross-cloud network is about, with a strong SLA, how do we provide that connectivity? How do we provide you, you know, the best of breed security services, but also the ability to bring your own? Uh, and so that you're not sort of locked in in a closed environment. You can, it's a very open ecosystem that we support. Uh, and then, uh, once you can have that connectivity fabric, really, you can now get access to those Google services and run much, much more quickly. Uh, and I think, you know, one of the things I just wanted to add is, right next to those GPUs and TPUs, you also need uh, storage that's built for AI and data. And so customers are looking for files, but object storage scale and performance. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, they're also looking for parallel file systems. Yeah. Those are all the great innovations we were yeah. uh, announcing this week. 
It, it actually, it, you're the first person to say the word storage to us. So <laughs> yeah, we're excited. That excites me because I, I thought that was part of the message that we didn't yeah. hear loud enough was we hear about all of this and the physics of storage, to your point, and how you connect it together. I, I've loved, actually, the, the uh, networking, the global networking uh, cross-cloud because that made a lot of sense. And storage is really the foundation under, that's where the data sits, right? So. Storage, absolutely. When you're training these large models, uh, if, you, uh, if you make them hiccup, if they have some sort of error in between, if they can't read the data or checkpoint the data fast enough, you slow down the overall effort. And so months and months of work can go away and can get slowed down. And so customers are looking for things like, give me Fuse capability, but I want it on top of GCS. And that's why we introduced Cloud Storage Fuse. So you get files access, whether you're using TensorFlow or PyTorch, it doesn't matter. And that was an innovation that we had to bring out uh, in storage to help these AI workloads. Uh, and so it's, it's incredible. We're partnering with Intel, actually, on their Deos uh, technology and bringing that into our parallel store product that gives you much, much higher performance parallel file systems. And that's more for like HPC type of use cases that also leverage ML capabilities. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you cannot, I mean, you need storage, you need networking, right next to those fantastic GPUs and TPUs, yeah. and the software on top. We were geeking out yesterday about this, I'm glad you brought that up, Rob, because a lot of the stuff that's gone on in the hyperscalers and you guys have done at Google, um, is you've done a lot of work on the physics, you know, um, architecting from IO to all the subsystems around making that performance work at scale, and now in comes AI and they need that data movement. They need faster processors and, and, and subsystems. So, you know, this is like the perfect storm in a way for Google to leverage that scale. So the question I have is, what's the new tweak that you guys are doing with the assets of Google from an infrastructure standpoint and what's new? We saw the TPUs, the, uh, the TPU V5E and the A3 VMs. What else do you guys have? What's, take a minute to explain the current state of the infrastructure and what's new. Yeah, I can maybe uh, and then, start there, yeah. Because it ties together, that's why you're absolutely, the dynamic absolutely. duo. <laughs> so, so I think we, we talked about cloud TPUs, cloud GPUs, the importance of uh, security, uh, storage and networking. Um, the other area we're investing a lot in is the software on top of that hardware infrastructure. And when it comes to machine learning, you really need to do that at a systems level and optimize the software to work with the underlying hardware um, to get the performance and the scale at the cost our customers expect. And so we had some really exciting announcements in the software space as well. Um, one of my favorites is something called uh, multi-slice for cloud TPUs. And so what this enables you to do is basically aggregate individual smaller clusters of TPU V5E into a single larger cluster that you can use to then train the largest scale models or serve models with great performance. And so and we can do that very cost effectively because you're taking these very these TPU V5Es with amazing price performance and aggregating them together into these larger systems. So we just see an opportunity to help our customers quite a bit with those, those software layers on top. Um, the one other interesting announcement we had I'd highlight there on the GPU side of things is um, uh, together with NVIDIA, we announced uh, that we are supporting uh, JAX on top of NVIDIA GPUs. And this is a fantastic partnership between the two companies. JAX is an amazing framework uh, for um, AI researchers. Uh, together we've optimized that through the OpenXLA compiler to deliver fantastic performance on top of NVIDIA GPUs. Uh, and then we're making that available to our, to our joint customers. So the software is, is super important in these environments too. Sasha, what's new on your end that's state of the art? Yeah, I already uh, talked a little bit about you know, storage with Cloud Storage Fuse and Parallel Store and Cross Cloud Network. But I wanted to touch a little bit about distributed cloud and build on what Mark shared about Vertex. By the so, way, my, that was my favorite announcement. I don't think they got enough, uh, enough press, so uh, definitely. So distributed cloud, you know, sometimes customers just cannot move their data yeah. or cannot move their workloads into the public regions. And so they need something at the edge or in their data centers, and they're looking for the latest AI capabilities. And so we already support through Vertex AI yeah. services like translation, like speech to text, uh, OCR capabilities, we're bringing in you know, workbench capabilities so they can develop their own models easily. And so it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's super exciting because you know, they can now also start doing things like document translation, take Microsoft Office, PDF documents, convert them locally without ever having to move that data into the cloud. 
And so you can imagine any kind of more traditional ML capabilities or as we move to generative AI, we think serving those and fine tuning those right at the edge or on yeah. prem is going to be super critical. And that's exactly what Google Distributed Cloud is built for. And it also seemed like it was an opportunity to uh, grow the ecosystem, especially with CSPs, because I think one of the references was uh, Orange yeah. uh, doing that. And like uh, to your point, like having sovereign clouds where France is kind of particular, Germany's kind of particular about certain data can't move out, like that, financial services data can't move outside of that country. That's exactly things, right. Things so we, we announced with Orange, and actually just yesterday we had an announcement about providing services with Google Distributed Cloud in El Salvador. Yeah. And so similar to the Orange use case, they're, they're very excited about data proc running on GDC so that they can remove PII and sensitive data that the regulations prohibit and the rest they can take to the cloud. But they can run locally, analytics locally and filter, run data proc and then get the best of the edge and the best of the yeah. cloud. Sovereignty is huge, cloud, yeah. sovereign clouds are hot. Now that's general availability I think you guys announced on, the, on that yes. product, just to clarify. Yes, GDC has been generally available. Yeah. We're making generally available a new revision of hardware, and so we've made the performance of the hardware much better. Yeah. We scale to much more racks, and then for retail customers, we needed a small form factor, so we introduced a three node, one RU yeah. system, you yeah. know, built for those stores, uh, for the next generation retail edge. Yeah. You mix the software on top of the TPUs and you got the ecosystem developing with, with uh, the cloud there, through the cloud. What's your ecosystem look like right now? How, how would you describe the uh, partners, your partners, you were obviously hardware, is it only Google, got other hardware, you got other software vendors, I, ISVs, the GSIs are thrilled by the way, on the AI side, they're building their own technology on top of Google, and so you have that, that wave going on, we call it the super cloud wave, but what's your ecosystem look like right now? What's your vision on how you see that expanding? Yeah, um, so the ecosystem is obviously absolutely critical, and uh, you know our customers expect us to come to them with, with <laughs> solutions, right? Not piece parts, and so those partners are really, really important. And maybe I'd highlight two key, two key areas. Um, first, um, our compute hardware partners are absolutely critical. So uh, you obviously saw Thomas and Jensen on stage talking about uh, how, how critical that relationship is and how close they're working together. Um, we're also working closely with other partners like Intel, like AMD, um, and others to make sure we're able to offer customers choice and flexibility at the hardware layer. Um, and then at the software layer, I think it's a, it's a, it's a fascinating time. Um, and we're really, really honored that uh, over 70% of the Gen AI unicorns have actually chosen to build their solutions, their models, on top of uh, Google Cloud. And so that's, um, you know, it's both a technology uh, engagement as well as a go-to-market engagement. Many of those partners have put those models into our uh, Vertex AI model garden. And ultimately what this enables for our customers is they can choose the best model for their, uh, for their needs, they can run it on the right hardware platform, and uh, you know, help them ultimately deliver the, the results they need. On your side, I can imagine the, the demand is high, especially the cross-cloud networking. Um, yeah. you know, latency aside, I don't know how you solve physics problem, but you know, bring your own cloud, this is going to be distributed. So yeah. clearly that's yeah. the path. I mean, people got to be excited to be partnering with you. The partnerships have been fantastic for us. You know, so I think in storage, I mentioned Intel, but we partner very closely with NetApp as well. We were offering a first party service built on NetApp for files. Um, and then on the networking side, we announced partnership with Broadcom Semantic, as well as Palo Alto Networks. We're taking their you know, security service edge and yeah. bringing that into yeah. our backbone. That helps lower latency yeah. uh, as well by 35% as I mentioned yeah. earlier. And then on distributed cloud, you know, customers want to be able to run things yeah. like Elastic, things like MongoDB. We just announced a partnership with yeah. SAP right in their data centers, yeah. sometimes even fully air-gapped. Uh, and so it's a thriving uh, partner ecosystem and we're, we're, we're loving I mean, that. You guys as veterans in the industry got to be looking at this market and saying, wow, this is so much going on. And new changes in a good way, architectural changes for customers to rethink how to organize themselves. What you just described is, is kind of an, a new phenomenon that everyone's going to be jumping into this. Okay, I want to get better capability. We haven't heard Edge much either uh, in, the, in the event, but the Edge is huge, right? I mean, I, I heard someone say, uh, move the workload to the data, not the compute. So you know, that's something that you're going to be doing, but also workloads are going to be moving around. So, you know, the whole Edge and the distributed nature of the infrastructure, I think it's going to get rebooted. I mean, I just see so many use cases where 
the efficiency of AI, if done properly with the infrastructure, deployed in a certain way, will be, will be amazing. Now the question I have for you guys is, what are you seeing as tell signs or signals from the market on any kind of playbook or architecture at the edge or on-premise cloud combo of, of, of architecting out the, the performance? Yeah, I, I'm not sure it's a one size fits all. Yeah. Right, and so I think our approach is to make sure that we try to understand the workloads, the use case, and provide the most optimized solutions for those, right? And so one of the things we like to talk about is it's really about your cloud, your way for customers. Yeah. And so what do you want to run in the public cloud what do you believe needs to be on-prem or in, at the edge in your data centers? And how do we provide the networking capability in between to make that as easy and as secure as possible? And I mean, frankly, and Mark, and I'm sure you can chime in, we find customers who are doing very large scale training and it's all about our regions with the latest and greatest TPUs. But then we find customers who are uh, trying to do a visual inspection inside their retail store and they need inferencing at the edge. And we want to be able to make sure that we have workload optimized infrastructure for any of those use cases. Yeah, that made total sense with the smaller retail version that you were talking about, the one rack unit yeah. version for retail. I think that inference at the edge is going to be important. I think to John, what John was saying, we're also seeing other different, what edge is to one company is very different yeah. to yeah. another company or yeah. a manufacturing floor or something of that nature. It's very different than a retail store. So, but. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I think Sachin laid, out, laid it out pretty comprehensively. Maybe just the one thing I would add is, the other thing we're hearing a lot from customers is the importance of speed, right? So as yeah. you said, I mean, this market is incredibly dynamic. These yeah. companies are trying to move really quickly to capture the opportunity. And so anything we can do to help them move yeah. faster and easier is hugely valuable. Um, so if you think about, for example, if you can take the, take the time to train a model down from a month to a week, that enables these companies to iterate like so much faster. And then you can enable them to deploy that model to the edge so they can serve their customers with lower latency. That delivers a better user experience. And so a lot of this is how do we help those companies innovate faster with, you know, with better infrastructure. And, and the training thing comes up, brings a great point. Like at what point is lag and latency on training? Oh, that's trained yesterday, where yes, one minute ago. And so I like the, how extensions and embeddings are coming in to yeah. kind of fill that gap between front lines of using data and in a way that's AI friendly and enabled. Um, so that's very cool. I think that's something that's not talked much. We'll unpack that later on theCUBE, but uh, new things are emerging that aren't that obvious to the naked eye, so to speak, and be like, wow, that's a left tweak and change things. Yeah, and I, just in addition to the speed, you know, one of the things after the keynote yesterday, I've heard many customers talk to us about is we showed in Vertex AI how it's, we, have, we support Google models, but we also showed Llama 2, like an open source from a, somebody else, and we showed Claude, which is from a third party with from Anthropic. And so they're like, hey, I can come to one place. As Mark said, I can move quickly. I know I can stay on top of things. And it's not just about Google models, it's completely open. Yeah. We're supporting OSS and third party in the same place, and that's incredible. I told uh, Webb, they said, call it Open Garden. Whatever you do, don't call it Wall Garden. garden. <laughs> don't call it a Wall Garden. I love the model 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 garden. That's a great, and it's easy to understand concept wise, even though you got your foundation models in there. Um, I got a request, I got a text, Mark, if you don't mind, uh, from someone who's watching, uh, texted me, and wanted you to explain, they're not familiar with TPU's tensor processing units. Sure. They wanted to know what's the difference between a TPU and a GPU relative to all the AI stuff. Would you mind uh, giving a quick tutorial yeah. of what a, t t a, t a tensor processing unit, TNP is, and how does that compare and contrast with a GPU? Happy to, so let me give a little context on TPU's first, and then we can talk about TPU's and GPU's. So, you know, I think it was eight or nine years ago, uh, someone at Google asked an interesting question, which is, what if we wanted to enable everyone that is using Google Search to interact with Google Search through voice for one minute a day? How much processing power would that take, right? As it turns out, it would take more than double the total amount of compute processing power that Google had deployed up until that time. Like, so, so massive, right? And un unfathomable, to be honest. And that was just for a minute uh, a day. Um, and so that sort of insight led, uh, you know, uh, you know, the great minds at that time to think about how we needed to architect and design things differently 
to meet the needs of this next class of, of workloads, right? And uh, it was sort of that insight that led to the original TPU V1 many years ago. Uh, since then, we've iterated five different uh, through five different versions to TPU V5e today. Um, and every step of the way, you know, designing them to meet the needs of the workloads at that point in time. Um, so we're really, really uh, pleased to be able to offer that to to our customers with you know with TPU V5e. The goal was really to make it more accessible to a broader range of customers and use cases. Um, now on GPUs, of course, many, many enterprise customers love GPUs, they love NVIDIA, they uh, have built and optimized their models to work on top of that. Um, and so we also partner really closely with NVIDIA to make those GPUs available. Ultimately, um, these customers are very technically sophisticated. And so they look at the specific needs of the workload and they can choose between different flavors of GPUs and different flavors of TPUs to meet their needs. One final point is, as a result, we're starting to see more and more customers use both. Um, so one example of this is, uh, is character AI. Uh, if, you've ever, if you haven't played around with it, it's a really pretty, pretty cool tool. Um, but uh, they're, they're going to be leveraging both our A3 uh, NVIDIA GPU instances as well as our uh, TPU V5e um, for different use cases in their workloads. Awesome, thanks for explaining that. Guys, thanks for coming. I know you're super busy. Last 30 seconds that we have left, uh, each of you quickly give a summary of how you see this event, what it means for your business unit, and message to your customer. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. So, it's all about AI and data. And when you think about AI and data, you need to think about the software, the infrastructure, the entire stack, and how we make this easy, how we make it secure for customers. So as you said, you can't forget about storage. All right? If you forget about storage, you're going to be burning SSDs all day long. It's not going to work. So please think about storage, and we've got the right high-performance storage solutions to support your, the AI and data workloads. Same thing on networking. It, it, your data is in different places, perhaps in silos. How do you bring that together, get the, get the best of our uh, products like Vertex AI and BigQuery? And don't forget about the edge. If there's some workload, some data that simply cannot move, We've got a form factor, we've got services, we've got connected, air-gapped options to help our customers. And so we're looking at, you know, we're really excited on just continuing to work with customers uh, and help them along this journey. Mark? Yeah, no, I, I just add, I mean, I think this is an inflection point in computing, right? If you look at the pressure and the requirements that this next generation of workloads is going to place on the infrastructure, already is placing on the infrastructure, it's unprecedented. And so to meet that need, we fundamentally believe you need to take a full stack approach, look at how you optimize across software and hardware, across compute network and storage, as we all uh, were just talking about. And by doing so, you can meet the needs of that next generation of workloads. And so, you know, we're really excited to be able to work with so many great customers to, to try to help them achieve their goals. Speed, power, architecture, the new ways, setting up the AI table, so to speak. Set it up for the next gen cloud solutions. Thanks for coming on, guys. Mark Soskin, thanks for taking the time. Two of the dynamic duos here <laughs> leading the businesses of giving us more horsepower. It's like Star Trek. Scotty, more power, you know? Um, thanks so much, guys, for coming on. Thank you. Thank you. Get the Star Trek joke in there. Okay, live CUBE coverage here. We'll be right back with more. Day two of three days of wall-to-wall -wall CUBE coverage, team coverage. I'm Shuffer with Rob Stretchy. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>